Hello friends, let us now learn some important points about aminoglycosides. So in the aminoglycosides, hello friends, let us now learn some important points about aminoglycosides. Aminoglycosides have two types, one MYCIN which is mycin which is derived from streptomyces, example streptomycin. On the other we have MICN, CIN. MICIN is a semi-synthetic form whereas MYCIN is a natural form. So MYCIN is a derivative from streptomyces, example streptomycin. Whereas MICIN is a semi-synthetic form, example we have nettlemycin. Then if you see the mechanism of action, aminoglycosides form diffuse, they diffuse across the outer coat of gram negative bacteria through the porins. They will diffuse across the outer coat of gram negative bacteria through porins and they will enter the periplasmic space and thus they cross the cell membrane by carrier mediated process. They cross the cell membrane by carrier mediated process linked to electron transport chain and oxygen dependent electron transport chain. So this is ineffective against the anaerobes. It is ineffective against anaerobes. Now if you see the mechanism of action in the cytoplasm these will bind to 30s ribosomes that is streptomycin and they will also bind to 50s ribosomes and thus in both these cases they will inhibit the once they bind to 30s ribosomes and 50s ribosomes and they inhibit the protein synthesis and they will also disintegrate the monosome formation or aggregation and thus they form polysome formation. Then these drugs also attach to 30s and 50s juncture and they cause distortion of mRNA codon requirement because they cause distortion of mRNA codon recognition this will lead to misreading of the code so mainly if you see they bind to 30s ribosome and 50 mainly 30s ribosome but they also bind to 50s ribosome and they inhibit the protein synthesis that is one second when they attach to the junction junction of 30s and 50s they will cause distortion of mRNA codon recognition and thus cause misreading of the code of the code they will also result in defective proteins being incorporated in the cell wall when the defective proteins incorporated in the cell wall they also cause along with augmentation of carrier mediated energy dependent phase 2 entry of antibiotics occurs phase 2 entry of antibiotics occurs that is EDP2 and this will increase the cell permeability and this will also cause the cell death. Then if you see the aminoglycosides will can be if they are combined with beta lactams they will cause easy cell penetration and thus this will have synergistic effect. Aminoglycosides with beta lactams have synergistic effect. Then if you see we have pharmacokinetics. In the pharmacokinetics there is no GI absorption or there is no oral absorption. This will have IM intravenous or intramuscular or it can be given by topical route. These aminoglycosides have concentration dependent killing post antibiotic effect. They also have post antibiotic effect. They are they will they are present in they are present in low concentration in synovial, pleural and peritoneal fluid and they are present in higher concentrations in endolymph, renal cortex causing ototoxicity. So first if you see they cause they are present in low concentration in synovial, pleural, peritoneal fluid whereas they are present in higher concentration in endolymph, renal cortex and thus causing ototoxicity and nephrotoxicity. 
thus causing ototoxicity and nephrotoxicity. Then they have less concentration in cerebrospinal fluid and aqueous humor. They will accumulate in so these drugs will accumulate in renal insufficiency and thus they will decrease the GFR. Then the, we have uh, aminoglycosides. So if you see aminoglycosides, these are systemic aminoglycosides and topical aminoglycosides in classification. Systemic aminoglycosides include streptomycin, gentamicin, canamycin, tobramycin, amicacin, sisomycin, nettlemycin, paramomycin and neomycin. Whereas topical aminoglycosides include framicitin and saframycin. Neomycin is actually systemic, not topical. That was wrongly written. Now, if you see, yeah, neomycin is systemic am aminoglycoside. Now, framicitin or, or, or saframycin are topical aminoglycosides. So these are actually effective for gram-negative and a aerobic bacilli. They are effective for gram-negative and aerobic bacilli. These are actually the streptomycin is a drug of choice in plague brucellosis with tetracycline. This streptomycin also causes side effect which is vestibular toxin. Then the most commonly used aminoglycoside is gentamicin and this is used along with penicillin, ampicillin and ceftrioxone. It is used along with penicillin, ampicillin and ceftrioxone. Then for the treatment and prophylaxis, we can use uh, these aminoglycosides can be used in septicemia, fever in immunocompromised patients and also in subacute bacterial endocarditis. We can use uh, these, step, uh, we, these aminoglycosides. Then side effects of aminoglycosides are very important. In the side effects, first, in the side effects of aminoglycosides, these aminoglycosides can cause nephrotoxicity. So they are, they can cause reversible ne nephrotoxicity. So risk factors of nephrotoxicity are hypokalemia. It can cause pre-existing renal disease or concomitant nephrotoxic medication all these will increase the nephrotoxicity then nephrotoxicity is seen maximum with neomycin and this neomycin is not indicated for systemic use it is not indicated for systemic use then we have streptomycin streptomycin is least nephrotoxic it is least nephrotoxic whereas the drug tobramycin followed by gentamicin tobramycin followed by gentamicin this is actually the most nephrotoxic amino acid which is used systemically so tobramycin followed by gentamicin is the most nephrotoxic amino acid used systemically then second we have ototoxicity then in the ototoxicity the most common, this ototoxicity is most commonly seen with prolonged usage, high uh, serum concentration, hypovolemia and in ototoxic medications like ethacrinic acid, you will see the presence of this ototoxicity. Then ototoxicity is of two types. One we have cochlear ototoxicity, second we have vestibular toxic ototoxicity. Then cochlear ototoxicity is caused by amicacin and neomycin maximally. Maximum cochlear ototoxicity is caused by neomycin and it is also caused by canamycin. Vestibular toxic is streptomycin and gentamicin are two vestibular toxic drugs. Then Streptomycin and gentamicin are two vestibular toxic drugs. Neomycin is maximum vestibular toxic drug and streptomycin is the maximum 
sorry neomycin it has mag neomycin shows maximum cochlear uh, ototoxicity whereas streptomycin shows maximum vestibular toxicity so cochlear and vestibular toxicity are uh, both equally uh, seen in tobramycin in tobramycin we see both cochlear and vestibular toxicity both these are seen equally so if we see overall maximum hearing loss is seen in amikacin then maximum hearing loss is seen in amikacin and least ototoxic drugs are nettlemycin is the least ototoxic drug then third neuromuscular blockade if you see neuromuscular blockade it is inhibited by presynaptic release of acetylcholine and decreased sensitivity of post synaptic receptor neuromuscular blockade will inhibit presynaptic release of acetylcholine and decreases the sensitivity of post synaptic receptor this neuromuscular blockade is increases the the risk of neuromuscular blockade is increased with hypocalcemia peritoneal administration and use of neuromuscular blockers then this neuro the causes of the neuromuscular blockade include this causes respiratory depression and this is also used in the treatment of iv administration of calcium then we have neomycin and streptomycin have maximum neuromuscular blockade whereas tobramycin has least neuromuscular blockade tobramycin has least neuromuscular blockade then if you see the uses of amino glycosides in the uses the amino glycosides are used as second line in att like kanamycin amikacin and neomycin then neomycin and framycetin can be used for topical use neomycin and framycetin can be used for topical use then we have newer drugs the newer drugs in this uh, uh, amino glycosides include plasomycin plasomycin shows complicated uh, uti causes complicated uti is sorry plasomycin is used in complicated uti spectinomycin is used as an alternative to penicillin for the treatment of gonorrhea it is used as an alternative to penicillin for the treatment of gonorrhea which is penicillin resistant and also penicillin allergic gonorrhea then the drug paramomycin is used in the treatment of inter intestinal amebiasis it is used in the treatment of intestinal amebiasis cryptosporidiosis in immunocompromised so paramomycin is used in the treatment of intestinal amebiasis cryptosporidiosis and in immunocompromised these newer drugs are less ototoxic and less vestibular toxic so these are the important points about the um amino glycosides thank you for watching